Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. According to various industry and government insiders with a direct connection to the Astrobotic Peregrine mission, NASA compelled Astrobotic to put the probe into the atmosphere for reasons that have set a very dangerous precedent for future Artemis missions and our return to the moon. All of this and more coming at you on the Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to a very special bulletin here on The Angry Astronaut. I need to issue a couple of disclaimers before I go any further. A few days ago, in the dead of night, I received a call from a source who had given me information about various events taking place with NASA and other spaceflight-related missions, and they had some very disturbing information for me about the Astrobotic mission. Now, to be clear, this source has a direct connection to the mission in question. This is not secondhand information. This person was a direct witness to everything that took place. And after getting this information, I started to dig a bit deeper, began to go to my other sources, especially at the government, and the further I dug into this story, the more disturbing it became. And just to be clear, I have received no official comment from Astrobotic or from anybody else associated with this mission, with the exception of Celestis, and their comment was that they know nothing about it. So, whatever happened with all of this was kept very much on the down low. As I said before, even though I am convinced that the sources who brought this information to me are being very truthful and accurate because they have nothing to gain by coming to me and a lot to lose, I have no official confirmation of any of these facts from any of the companies or government organizations concerned. And if you are watching this and you have any sort of direct association with this mission and know more about it, well, all of my contact information is in the description and I can guarantee your anonymity. The following then is a summary of events that transpired from approximately 72 hours prior to the maiden launch of Vulcan Centaur on January 8th and the burn up of the Peregrine Lander on January the 18th. Again, this summary is based on my own research and the testimony of my sources, but has not been officially confirmed by anybody involved. At approximately 4.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on January the 18th, Peregrine came back home, burning up completely over the South Pacific, precisely where Astrobotic had intended it to break up. By the way, a number of live streams erroneously called this an uncontrolled re-entry, but it was actually extremely well controlled. Astrobotic, through a variety of innovative uses of short-duration burns, was able to maneuver the spacecraft for a controlled re-entry that once again came down far away from any inhabited areas and precisely where Astrobotic wanted it to re-enter. This was a unique feat of engineering innovation. And as you're about to see, this is one of a large number of impressive feats of engineering that the Astrobotic team was able to carry out from the time of launch on January 8th till 10 days later when Peregrine was lost over the Pacific. However, there was a lot of conflicting emotions going on in the Mission Control Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania when this burn up occurred. You could hear a pin drop in the room and a lot of people were tearing up as well. But these were tears of frustration rather than disappointment. Well, I'm sure a lot of the people involved were disappointed as well, but there was also a great deal of frustration involved because Astrobotic had not actually wanted Peregrine to burn up. They had decided to try to get the probe to the moon in spite of its damage. However, NASA had stepped in and insisted that they not do this. Now, to be clear, this was a private mission. NASA had no official authority to tell Astrobotic to do anything, but what they did have the power to do is threaten future funding. 
In other words, they made it clear, although not in so many words, that if Astrobotic chose to ignore their recommendations, they might have a hard time getting funding from NASA in the future. And given that NASA is the primary source of revenue for Astrobotic, well, they had very little choice but to do what they were told to do. So why did all of this occur? Why would NASA have demanded that Astrobotic burn Peregrine up when they could have kept it operational? Well, to answer this question, we actually need to turn back the clock to December 21st of 2023, when Navajo Nation President Boo Nigren sent a letter, an urgent letter actually, to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson and Transportation Assistant Secretary for Tribal Government Affairs Arlando Teller. President Nigren expressed what he called, quote, our deep concern and profound disappointment regarding a matter of utmost importance, unquote. As many of you probably know, there were human remains on the Peregrine Lander, including some very famous people. And according to Navajo traditional beliefs, the moon is a sacred place, and disposing of human remains on the moon would have been an act of sacrilege. And the influence that the Navajo wield in the current administration is considerable. And this is because the current Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland, is Navajo. And after this letter was sent in, well, the reaction was not immediate because it came in just prior to Christmas, but as soon as 72 hours prior to the launch of Vulcan Centaur, there were emergency hearings being carried out in Congress regarding this launch. And the idea of delaying this launch was being seriously considered until the last possible moment. Now, to be clear, once again, this was a private mission. According to NASA, they had no official authority authority to order Astrobotic or ULA to do anything. But the fact of the matter is, as I said before, NASA definitely can enforce compliance on the part of their partners just by threatening future funding. Now, once again, I'm not saying that this was done in so many words, but it was definitely implied that if Astrobotic did not do as they were told, future funding would definitely be in jeopardy. However, at least as far as the launch was concerned, given the fact that this was happening only a few days prior to launch, and even if Astrobotic chose to remove Celestis, the company that was carrying the remains on the Peregrine, they couldn't do it in anything less than a few weeks given the nature of balancing payloads and integrating cargoes into a fairing. This would have put off the launch for at least a month. Now, once again, I'd like you to think about this for a moment. Because of the actions of a small group of people and their religious beliefs, we came very close to having the maiden launch of an incredibly important rocket being delayed. Fortunately, this didn't happen. But what did happen is a promise from the government to the Navajo Nation that the Navajo would be consulted on any future missions, almost as if they were an independent signatory nation on the Artemis Accords. However, as I said before, the launch was not delayed, and as we all know, an anomaly took place almost immediately after the launch, even though Vulcan performed perfectly. Although the exact details of the anomaly are still being ascertained, it appears that a malfunction with the valves led to a buildup of pressure in an oxidizer tank, which led to a rupture in the tank and a leak. This led to a significant imbalance between the propellant an oxidizer and a loss of the liquid helium as well that was necessary for the propulsion system's proper functionality. That being the case then, the vehicle was unable to point its solar panels properly at the sun and it was thought that the vehicle was going to be lost in a few hours. However, through an extremely innovative use of the propulsion system, they managed to get the solar panels pointing at the sun anyway just prior to loss of communication and and to most people's surprise, communication was restored when the vehicle came out of communications blackout. Peregrine had been saved, even though not everybody was fully aware of this yet. 
President Nygren of the Navajo Nation issued a statement saying that he was pleased that the vehicle had malfunctioned because, after all, this had taken care of his problem and it had actually taken care of the government's problem. The anomaly meant that no human remains were going to end up on the moon, so no harm, no foul. However, nobody imagined that Astrobotic was going to be able to restore as much control and functionality to Peregrine as they managed to do. Within a couple of days, Astrobotic, in spite of the leak, had kept the solar panels oriented towards the sun, had maintained full power on the lander, and had actually started to turn on some of the payloads. Also, the leak began to slow down, and Astrobotic was gaining more and more control over Peregrine. There was no chance for a soft landing. However, there was a possibility that Astrobotic might have been able to put Peregrine into lunar orbit or possibly crash it into the moon, which would have provided a lot of useful data, certainly not what was expected, but at the same time, it would have been extremely useful as far as testing out the navigational systems, the LIDAR, for example, on the lander, those sorts of things, if they had been able to manage to do that. However, there was one really big problem. Well, there were some smaller problems as well, of course. Astrobotic could not demonstrate that they had full control over the lander. They didn't know what was going to happen if they fired up the engines to full power, and there was a real risk that Peregrine would turn into an unguided missile flying through cislunar space, or if it exploded in some sort of catastrophic scenario, it would have created a cloud of space junk. However, Astrobotic felt that the benefits outweighed the risks. And really, I agree with that assessment. There is a lot of junk flying around in cislunar space that's much, much bigger and much more of a problem than Peregrine would ever be. And even though firing up the engines theoretically could have caused the lander to blow up, this is precisely what they did anyway later in the flight when they were trying to make the lander re-enter the atmosphere in a precise and controlled manner. The very same short duration burn that Astrobotic used to control the lander at that point could also have been used to avoid crashing into the atmosphere at all, looping around the Earth and returning to the Moon for an attempt, as I said before, to enter lunar orbit or, short of that, crash into the Moon. However, there was a very big problem with this aside from the navigational hazard issues. And that, of course, was the fact that if Astrobotic managed to crash the probe into the moon, that would be an even greater act of desecration. This would have been extremely disappointing to the Navajo Nation, especially given the fact that they had just received a promise to be consulted in case any human remains were going to be delivered to the moon in the future. And crashing the remains into the moon would have been a much more significant act of desecration, as I said before. Now, I have no proof whatsoever that this was NASA's primary motivation, but given the fact that Peregrine presented a very small, almost negligible risk to navigation, unless it exploded, of course, but given the fact that Astrobotic fired up the engines anyway during the re-entry trajectory, obviously there wasn't a tremendous concern about blowing the probe up with the engines since they got them working, why then was NASA so determined to stop Astrobotic in their tracks? And so, for a couple of days, the updates from Astrobotic dropped off to almost nothing on Twitter, while the debate was raging between the Astrobotic leadership and NASA officials, until finally NASA made it very clear that if Astrobotic did not do as they were told, then future funding with NASA would potentially be in jeopardy. Once again, this was not a direct threat, but rather an implied threat. But this is definitely something that Astrobotic could not take a chance with, and so they complied. So why is this a big deal? Well, for two very important reasons. Number one, this was a private mission. NASA should not have been able to dictate any sort of decision-making terms to Astrobotic. All they should have been able to do was advise, but they obviously did a lot more than that. And number two, regardless of religious beliefs, the moon does not belong to any group of people or any particular 
particular religious faith. The Navajo should not have the power of a signatory nation in the Artemis Accords. They have no right to negotiate treaties on their own behalf with any other nation, and they shouldn't have this kind of authority. And once again, although I have no proof that this was NASA's primary motivation in this particular incident, given that the controversy almost delayed the January 8th launch in the first place, I can't imagine that this wasn't very much in NASA's mind. They could deal with the problem very easily if Peregrine burned up 10 days later in Earth's atmosphere, and it would have compounded the problem very much so if Peregrine had continued on its mission with the potential danger of smashing into the moon with its human remains being carried by Celestis. But what concerns me the most is the precedent that this sets for future CLPS missions and for the future of Artemis in general. These are private missions. The companies carrying them out should have complete control over what these probes do and should have final decision-making power. But they clearly don't. And that's a serious problem, not only for Astrobotic and every other company that's going to be coming after them, but also for any private missions that intend to go to the moon in the future. For example, lunar mining efforts. How are lunar mining companies going to be able to exploit the vast resources of the moon when you have groups of people who feel that doing that might be a desecration? All of these things could create very significant problems in the future, and in my opinion, a dangerous precedent has been set. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. If you would like to support this channel and content, there are details on how to do that in the description, and I will bring you more updates on this story as they come available. Once again, I have my contact information in the description if anybody wants to approach me on this story. I guarantee your anonymity. And as always, stay angry about space.